Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome to lesson 65 in the Intermediate Algebra series. So in this tutorial I'm going to cover the slope-intercept form of a line. So the slope-intercept form of a line looks like this. y is equal to mx plus b. So m is going to be the slope of our line and b is going to be the point on the y-axis where our line crosses the y-axis. So for example, if we were looking at this line right here, written in slope-intercept form, y is equal to 3x plus 2. So in this case, our slope m is equal to 3, and our b is equal to 2. So let's take care of the b first. So b equals 2. So the way we're going to represent that on our xy coordinate system here is we simply start at the origin, 0, 0, and then we just go up one, two units on the y-axis. So our b was a positive two, so we go up positive two units on the y-axis. So that's where we mark our b, and this is going to be a point on our line. The next thing we want to look at is we want to look at the slope of our line. So our slope m is equal to three. So as a refresher, the slope of a line is equal to how that line changes in the y direction compared to how it changes in the x direction. For our case, our slope is 3. So we can rewrite 3 as 3 divided by 1. 3 divided by 1 is still 3. So 3 is our change in our y direction and 1 is the change in the x direction. So we have this, this little mark right here marking our b now. And so we can go up three units in the y direction. So from our point on the line, we go up one, two, three units in the y direction. So this point right here isn't a point on our line, but I'm just kind of drawing it so you can see how many units we're changing in the y direction from our point on the line. So that's how many units we change in the y direction. And so for every three units in the y direction we change, we also need to change one unit in the x direction. So coming off of that same point, we go over one unit in the x direction. So that's about right there. So now if I was just to kind of go ahead and do like a little projection right here, straight up, and then one straight over, you could see that right here is where those two projections cross. And so that's going to be another point on the line. So we have a point here, and we have a point here right now that we know is on our line. Let's go ahead and look at this slope again. So there's another way we can think about this. We can also think of our slope as negative 3 divided by negative 1. Because our slope just has to be 3, and negative 3 divided by a negative 1 is still equal to a positive 3, and so that's our slope. So we can also think of our slope this way. So this means that we can change 3 units in the negative y direction for every 1 unit that we change in the negative x direction. So we have one unit in the negative x right here for every three units in the negative y. If we look at this second point that we drew here, if we went negative one, two, three units in the y direction, so this would be our negative y would bring us from here to here, then we would have to go negative one unit in the x direction. So from here we go negative one unit in the x direction back to a point on our line. So we can do that one more time, negative one, negative two, negative three units in the y direction puts us right here and for every negative three units in the y direction we need to go negative one unit in the x direction so we simply go negative one unit in the x direction and that puts us right here so now let's just go ahead and connect the dots so now we have sketched the line y is equal to three x plus two so let's just go ahead and do one more example here Let's look at the line y is equal to negative one half x minus three. So in this case, our b right here is a negative three. So in order to mark b, we just go to the y-axis. We start at the origin and we go to negative one, negative two, negative three units in the y direction. So this point right here marks our b, which happens to be negative 3. So our slope now, this is our m here, is negative 1 half. So now our slope is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. 
So there's two different ways we can write negative one half. We can bring this negative to the numerator and we can look at this as negative one over two. Or we could also move it to the denominator and we could have positive one over negative two. Both of these two fractions here are exactly identical to negative out front and then a positive one divided by a positive two. What this tells us here, since our slope is negative one half, that means we can either go negative one unit in the y direction for every positive two units in the x direction, or we can go a positive one unit in the y direction for every negative two units in the x direction. So let's go ahead and look at this a little bit closer now. So we already know that this point right here is our b. This is the negative three on the y-axis. So this point is part of our line. So first let's go ahead and look at this representation of our slope now. So we can go negative one unit in the y direction for every positive two units in the x direction. From here, going down negative one in the y brings us to right here, positive two in the x. We go over one, two units in the positive x direction, and that puts us right there. So this is going to be a point on our line. So now let's go ahead and consider this alternative way to look at our slope. We can also go a positive one unit in the y direction for every negative two units in the x direction. So from here, we can go a positive one in the y direction, and then a negative one, negative two in the x direction. And so another thing to notice here is we could have started at this point and we could have gone that positive one and negative one, negative two, and that would have brought us to our original point. So we can keep on going if we wanted to. We could go up one unit in the y direction, and then negative one, negative two units in the x direction would bring us here. And we could do it one more time. Up one, over one, two. We get another point right there. And we could continue this from this side, but this way, if we wanted to keep going this direction, we would use this first representation of the slope. So we'd want to go down one unit in the y direction and then over one, two in the x direction, puts us right about there. And so if we were going to sketch this line now, we can simply just connect the dots. And so now this orange line here, by connecting the dots, represents the line y is equal to negative one half x minus three these points right here should fall directly on the line. So if I was just a little bit better at my drawing skills, then it would have happened that way to begin with, but it's not too bad. So anyway, that's how you can do a rough sketch of lines when they're in slope intercept form. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have an excellent day, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.